Ye, the sun peeked through the curtains, casting a warm glow over John's face. For two decades, he woke up with one thought in mind, his love for Mary. Their journey had flown by, a seamless blend of laughter and shared dreams that appeared to the outside world as close to perfection as one could get. John often heard friends praise their relationship, saying, You and Mary are relationship goals. Mornings in their home were filled with playful banter over breakfast, while evening saw them cozied up on the couch, watching favorite shows or discussing their kids' day. Lily and Max, their two children, were the apples of their eyes, and the lively dog Bella was the cherry on top of their family. Sunday, their house surrounded by a white picket fence, felt like a living dream. John often found himself reminiscing about their early days when they were young, wild, and deeply in love. He'd recall the sparkle in Mary's eyes when he surprised her with a bouquet of roses or the moments they danced in the rain, carefree and engulfed in pure magic. However, of late, subtle changes began to creep into their seemingly idyllic life. Nothing alarming, just little things that felt off. Mary seemed more distant, her laughter a bit restrained, and her gaze often lost in thought. There were times when she came home late from work, attributing it to unexpected meetings or office events. John tried not to dwell on these changes. After all, they had built a foundation of trust over two decades. Doubting Mary over trivial matters felt wrong. At night, as John lay in bed with Mary's back turned to him, a tiny nagging voice whispered, What if there's more to this story? He would quickly shush it away, pulling Mary close and reminding himself of the love-filled years they had shared. As days turned into weeks, the feeling of unease grew stronger. John couldn't shake the idea that just maybe his perfect life wasn't so perfect after all. The days took on a new hue for John, a shade darker than he was used to. Each moment felt stretched, and every second was a question mark. It all began on a quiet Saturday afternoon. Mary had gone out for one of her frequent work meetings, and John was sorting through their bedroom closet, attempting to find an old photo album. His intention was to take a trip down memory lane, reminding himself of better times. Doubting deeper into the closet, a small glint caught his eye. Pushing aside old scarves and winter hats, he found a phone he didn't recognize. It wasn't Mary's usual phone, that much was certain. Curiosity peaked, he turned it on. The screen came alive, displaying numerous notifications from someone named Alex. The messages seemed intimate, with words like, Miss you and can't wait to see you again. A cold wave of realization washed over John, and his heart raced. Could it be? Could Mary really be seeing someone else? He didn't want to jump to conclusions. Perhaps there was an innocent explanation. Maybe Alex was just a close friend or a relative Mary had reconnected with. Trying to calm his racing heart, he decided to play detective. For the next few days, he paid closer attention to Mary's habits. The late-night phone calls, the giggles, the secret smiles to herself. It all started making a grim kind of sense. One evening, he took a bold step. John decided to follow Mary discreetly. He watched as she entered a quaint little cafe and settled into a corner booth. Soon after, a man walked in, Alex. They embraced warmly, a little too warmly for just friends. John felt like a voyeur, peering into a world he wasn't meant to see. The sight of Mary laughing, her hand lingering on Alex's, shattered him. He wanted to confront them right there, ask them how they could betray his trust. But something held him back. The pain was intense, but John wasn't one to make him to make impulsive decisions. He needed to be sure. He needed a plan. Driving home that night, the weight of the world pressed down on him. The woman he had loved and trusted for 20 years was living a double life. The pain of betrayal was sharp and raw, but John wasn't going to let this slide. He was going to uncover the truth, no matter the cost. As the days passed, John's initial shock morphed into a steely determination. He felt like a man reborn with newfound clarity of purpose. Every fiber of his being screamed for justice, but he was determined to act wisely, not impulsively. He realized that for maximum impact and to ensure Mary truly understood the depth of her betrayal, he needed to confront her in a way she would never forget. The idea struck him one quiet evening as he was thumbing through old family photos, a dinner party with all of Mary's family, the very people she had grown up with, the ones who had celebrated their union and been part of every significant chapter of their lives. They all loved and respected John, 
Revealing the truth in front of them would hit Mary the hardest, making her realize the gravity of her actions. He began his preparations. Invitations were sent out under the guise of a surprise anniversary party that John was secretly planning for Mary. Her family, completely unaware of the storm brewing, responded with enthusiasm, touched by John's romantic gesture. Meanwhile, John started gathering evidence. He discreetly documented Mary's secret rendezvous with Alex, making sure he had video proof of their intimate moments. It was a difficult task, for each captured moment felt like a dagger through his heart, but he pressed on, fueled by a burning desire for justice. As the date of the dinner neared, John felt a mixture of dread and anticipation. He arranged for the children to spend the weekend at a friend's house, wanting to shield them from the impending fallout. The dining table was set to perfection, complete with Mary's favorite flowers and dishes. The atmosphere was festive, with soft music playing in the background. But beneath the veneer of celebration, a storm was brewing. Guests started arriving, filling the house with laughter and warmth. Mary was touched, her eyes misted with emotion. Little did she know that this would be a night she'd never forget. As the main course was served and the room echoed with happy chatter, John took a deep breath, preparing himself for the most challenging act of his life. His plan was set in motion, and there was no turning back now. The moment of reckoning was here. The atmosphere in the room was thick with celebration. Memories of the past twenty years were shared, glasses clinked, and the air was filled with hearty laughter. Each of these sounds and sights seemed surreal to John, like a distant echo. As he waited for the right moment, Mary was radiant, her eyes gleaming with surprise and appreciation for what she believed to be a touching gesture by her husband. She leaned in to whisper, This is the sweetest thing you've ever done for me. John, though tormented inside, nodded, masking his turmoil with a practiced smile. As dessert was served, John felt it was time. He stood up, tapping his glass gently, the universal signal for attention. The room fell silent, all eyes on him expectantly, awaiting a loving speech. John took a deep breath. Thank you all for being here tonight, he began his voice steady. Today I wanted to talk about trust, about love, and about truth. The guests exchanged glances, sensing a shift in the atmosphere. Mary looked up, her face a mask of confusion. John continued, over the years we've all shared numerous happy moments, haven't we? But today I want to share something else, something I recently discovered. He paused, taking out a small remote from his pocket. The lights dimmed, and the large TV screen in the living room flickered to life. Displayed on it were clips of Mary and Alex, their secret meetings and intimate conversations. The room was engulfed in stunned silence, each scene more incriminating than the last. As the video ended, the weight of shock was palpable. Mary's face had drained of all color, her eyes wide with disbelief and horror. Her family members stared at the screen, then at her, seeking some kind of explanation. How could you? John's voice trembled. Twenty years, Mary? Was it all a lie? Mary's voice broke as she tried to respond. John, I, I never meant for any of this to happen. It was a mistake. But John cut her off. A mistake? For how long? How many days, weeks, and months was this mistake continuing? The room echoed with murmured whispers and gasps. Mary's siblings tried to intervene, asking John to perhaps discuss this privately, but he stood firm. In front of the very family that celebrated our union, I want you to know the depth of your betrayal, he declared, eyes filled with tears. I gave you everything, and this is what I get in return. Mary was sobbing now, her voice a mix of regret and desperation. I'm so sorry, John. Please, let's talk away from all this. But John had said all he wanted to. You need to leave, Mary. Leave our home. In the days following the confrontation, John's home, which once buzzed with life and laughter, transformed into a silent monument to the love that once was. The deafening silence was often interrupted by the constant ringing of the telephone and knocks on the door, but John couldn't bear to face the world or its barrage of questions and sympathies. Every corner of the house held a memory. The couch where they'd cuddled and watched countless movies, the kitchen where they'd cooked meals together, even the small den in the wall from when they tried, laughingly and unsuccessfully, to move in a too large bookshelf. Everything echoed Mary's absence. One evening, as John was aimlessly wandering from room to room, 
he stumbled upon the old photo album he had been searching for weeks earlier. Opening it, he was flooded with a tidal wave of memories, their wedding day, the birth of their kids, holidays and birthdays. He realized that while the pain of betrayal was sharp, the pain of loss was even deeper. Their children, Lily and Max, were equally heartbroken. They had known their family as a pillar of love and trust, and seeing it crumble was beyond comprehension. They missed their mother, but also grappled with feelings of anger and disappointment. John did his best to shield them, ensuring they knew they were loved and that their parents' issues weren't their fault. One day, a letter arrived, written in Mary's handwriting. She expressed her guilt, regrets, and undying love for John. She spoke of the loneliness that led her down a path she regretted with every fiber of her being. She begged for a chance to explain, not to mend their relationship, but to provide closure. Against his better judgment, John agreed to meet. Seeing Mary again was like reopening a wound. She looked haggard, a shadow of her former self. Their conversation was filled with tears, regrets, and some semblance of understanding. Mary explained how her relationship with Alex had begun innocently, but how she lost her way amidst feelings of neglect and the need for attention. While John could understand, he couldn't forget or forgive. The trust that was the bedrock of their relationship had crumbled, and there was no going back. They parted ways with a promise to co-parent their children and keep their well-being at the forefront. As the weeks turned into months, John slowly began to rebuild his life. He dove into his work, spent quality time with Lily and Max, and sought therapy to process his pain. Friends and family rallied around him, their support acting as a bomb for his wounded soul. Despite the hurt and betrayal, John realized he needed to let go of the past to embrace the future. While he might never fully heal, he was determined to find happiness again, not just for himself, but for his children. The aftermath of the storm was painful, but as with all storms, it also brought clarity and in time, a new beginning.